All right. Y'all got to know this. The Jezebel spirit. Okay. It began through an actual woman named Jezebel. Okay. But men can also be working under a Jezebel spirit because the attributes of that spirit, men are not immune to. They're not immune to. The only perfect example I will follow is Jesus Christ. Even the disciples themselves treated women unfairly. And I'm not going against scripture. I'm not. But I will tell you, when Jesus treated women with respect, the disciples would be like, what is he doing? What? What is he going on? They were just so shocked. So you're telling me that the disciples knew what they were doing more than Jesus Christ himself? I don't think so. Absolutely not. There was times where he had to cast Satan out of them. There was one of them who completely betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. We are under a curse of sin. Okay? We are. Now, if you are not in an actual church service, right? Then the things that are said are appropriate in church. Don't, you don't get to apply those to everything else. That is in a church service. It's one thing if you're in a church, a house of God. It's another thing if you're just in public normal life. Women are allowed to have a voice. Women are allowed to agree or disagree. I am in love with Jesus Christ. I will never again be able to trust another man in my life. I have been betrayed beyond comprehension. You know what? I was cheated on by everyone I've ever been with. And they were all men. But I know that all men aren't horrible. But I know that when it comes to the Jezebel spirit, it is not confined to only one gender having the possibility of being under it. No. That is why it's called the Jezebel spirit. There's no gender. It's a Jezebel spirit. It is demonic. It's evil. And... <sighs> Jesus knew better. He knew, literally, back in the day, they would say women aren't worthy of the life because they blamed sin on Eve. They did. You know why? Because they ignored the fact that when, the Bible says it, when God saw Adam, he was seeing Adam and Eve because they were of one flesh, bone of each other's bone, flesh of each other's flesh. So when Eve sinned, it was also Adam because Eve was part of Adam and they were both part of God. They were made one flesh, made for each other, 50-50, to be companions. This is why Jesus Christ is the new Adam, and the church is the bride. Not any single one of us could ever be righteous enough for Jesus. He loves all of us, and he is not lacking in any way in the way that human beings are in his comprehension he is God himself in the flesh coming in this the form of the son of God who's so powerful and so holy his sacrifice alone washed away the sin of all eternity for all those who believe in him we cannot limit the truth of God on our own understanding We can't trust ourselves like that. I don't trust myself like that. I don't think so. I've got to pray. Hang on. Okay. You can't judge an entire gender based off something that doesn't apply to each one individually. Unless you're going and talking about how sin began. Not to mention the Bible. I'm going to show y'all right after this video. The Bible stated sin was committed through one man. Because you know what man means? It's like saying mankind. It's talking about man and woman. Adam is not just Adam. It's not all on Adam, just like it's not all on Eve. 
You and me both are guilty. This is not a blame game. You and me both fall short. You and me both ought to praise God every day and thank God he loves us enough to die for us in the way he did. Because we are unworthy. We are a wretch. <sighs> we have to have humility. Jesus did not treat women the way that the disciples did. We are not told to go off the example of the disciples because they made mistakes as well. Even they had to have Satan himself cast out of them by Jesus Christ. One of them betrayed him completely and offered up his life for money. I am not going off the example of a group of people who do that. And they were all men. But I'm not going to sit here and judge the entire male race based on the mistakes of a group of men. That is not only illogical, it is unethical, it is unbiblical, and it is untruthful. And it is limiting your understanding to a thesis rather than a revelation of the fact and the truth. Your perception is always going to be capable of misunderstanding something and being completely confident in thinking it's fact. No, I don't trust. Nope, nope, I don't trust my own perception. No. When I started to see all these things and realize these things that were in the way, I was disgusted with all these things that were in the way of me being able to reach the truth. So I just cut right through it. I said, God, please show me the truth untouched by man. Please show me the truth completely untouched by, the, by corrupt. Com please show me the truth completely untouched by corruption. And for some reason, I don't know why, but I, I directly identified who I was speaking like this. I made it clear to the air through my mouth. I was speaking to the Lord of the highest, whitest, brightest, purest light, grounded in pure love and pure truth. Nothing more, nothing less. Because those things are eternal and they don't lack. There's nothing less within the truth or love. And when I, when I asked for the truth untouched by man, my intentions were completely ridded of lies. But God gave me even more than that. He moved my own perception out of the way. I'm so glad. We are sinners without Jesus. To live is Christ and to die is gain. We are supposed to deny ourselves, take up the cross, and have Jesus live through us. Move our perceptions to the side and completely deny ourselves. Not praise ourselves and give pride to ourselves. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about the messenger. It's about Jesus Christ. The gospel is about Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach. Of whom when he was crucified, even the rocks were rent and reacted in more sorrow than the human beings that were at the cross in general. The earth cracked. It broke at the sight of the Son of God dying on that cross. And yet the people in front of it, yes, there was weeping and there was sorrow. But even the earth itself expressed more sorrow than we ever could. When I met Jesus, I had a vision of me being at his feet at the cross. And I was stuck in my closet crying for four hours nonstop. It was like I was watching the love of my life, someone I know so well. Not only was Jesus tortured and beaten and ostracized and lied on, and people committing false witness against him, every single one of those things has happened to me. I was tortured. I was beaten. I was ostracized. I've had people commit false witness on me. Everyone. And it wasn't as bad as Jesus. No, because he had to bear the weight of all sin. But me having been tortured in real life, I'm not just telling you guys a story. Please do not feel sorry for me. I am a survivor. That situation doesn't define me. It refined me through the fire. I've been tortured in real life. I was held captive for five days. I wasn't allowed to put my clothes on. I wasn't allowed to eat. I wasn't allowed to sleep. I wasn't allowed to drink anything. I wasn't allowed to use the bathroom. I wasn't even allowed to flinch when I was being hit in the face. 
I had, I was forced to make a choice to either have my nose broken or my teeth knocked out. I chose to have my nose broken. I had my head cracked open. I had three different knives held to my neck. My son was born a month early because I was lifted up by this person with one arm off the ground when I was eight months pregnant. You know, when we end up in these situations with abusive people, we don't know that they're like that in the beginning. And if you do some research on abusive relationships, none of them know in the beginning. It's called a honeymoon phase. They reel you in by making you think they're such a wonderful person. And then once you realize they're not, it's too late because they know that you're already so in love. And people would think, I'm so stupid. You know, people just think women are so dumb. <clears throat> when they continually go back to the people who abuse them. And for people who would love to say it, no, it's not an addiction to the trauma. For me, I get to tell my story because I lived it. Not you, not anyone else. I don't care what a doctor's thesis says. A doctor's not God either. When I am in love with someone, even when they hurt me tremendously, my love didn't just go poof, disappear. What kind of real emotions and real love can just disappear like that, that quick? Yes, he did me wrong. He held me captive and tortured me. So on and so forth. For five days in October 2014. But there's, there's people out there who have had much worse happen to them. And compared to my story, it's nothing compared to what they went through. But nonetheless, I was tortured and it brought me close to Jesus because he was tortured and beaten. I was forced to hold my three-month-old while I was being beaten in the face. And if I flinched, it was over. I had to sit there and not flinch while being punched. I got multiple concussions within a five day period. This person was threatening to beat my three month old with a hanger and threatening to kick my, kick my two year old at the time in the chest, saying she's gonna experience excruciating pain. I was being forced to say I did horrible things that I never did because he, over time began to, once I had started to catch on to him cheating on me and I don't know what it is, but I've learned through research and. Being abused myself. These kind of abusive people, once they know that they're caught, especially if they're cheating, they start to get insecure. And they start to think, oh, they know I'm cheating, so now they're, they're going to go cheat. <clears throat> Sorry, Charlie. Just because you do things a certain way doesn't mean everyone else does. Just because you enjoy being a horrible person doesn't mean everyone else does. Just because you go do someone wrong, just because they did you wrong, doesn't mean everyone else does. Just the thought of cheating on anyone I had ever been with. The fact, and I would be mad that I was being cheated on, and I would think, you know, if I was doing this to them, it'd be so different. Shit would be hitting the fan, and it would have been done. But I'm over here putting up with all of it again and again and again, and it's how dare I speak up for myself. That's how females are treated. Oh, and they're extremely stupid when they don't magically just fall out of love when things go wrong. They're dumb. And apparently they deserve to be beaten when they go back. Because when it comes to these things and women, their research is almost non-existent. Women have been ostracized and hated since the days of Jesus Christ. Okay? Look at how they treated women, even the disciples. It's, hello? Jesus never said he, every disciple he chose was perfect. Clearly they weren't. And clearly I'm not. Clearly you're not. None of us are perfect. Okay? No. No. If women were so horribly evil, then they would not have come as a half of the image of God in the first place. If you think an entire gender is evil then you're basically accusing the entire half of the image of God of being evil. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and invisible forces of darkness. There is so much more to learn when you are 
just meeting God, you will never actually have it all figured out just like that. And with all the prophetic downloads you may be getting, you may think it's that way, but it's not. God's knowledge is infinite, and it keeps on going and going and going. Because that's how powerful the truth is alone, and the truth is God. The glory of God shines through Jesus Christ. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. Surely a completely holy and righteous God cannot be reached unless it is through the truth. <laughs> Jesus treated women with respect. No, he didn't praise them. He had some common decency and treated them like human beings rather than creatures who deserve to be treated as less than and deserve to be treated like they need to be shut up and silenced and just completely shut out and treat like their mistakes. Jesus didn't do that like a lot of the men in that day did. Let me repeat it. Women even wanting to get baptized and coming into the faith, they were beaten for it. Is this not ringing any abusive bells? Hello? Does Satan not know that the Messiah would be born from a woman born under the law? The Bible says it. Hello? The Messiah is the biggest threat to Satan entirely. The Messiah had to be born through a woman. Women are the only one, ones who can give life through their flesh, not every woman. But you know what I'm saying. Some are born with their womb closed, some are not. The Son of God. Literally, Satan knew that the Son of God would be born of a woman born under the law. So who the hell do you think Satan's going to have a heinous, illogical hatred for the most and do everything he can to make them look like they're everything they're not and make scripture look like it's saying everything it isn't based on the way the disciples may have acted. They're not Jesus Christ. Your role model better be Christ and Christ alone. Do not put your faith in man because if you're putting your faith in the disciples and the example they left, you're putting your faith in man. If you're putting your faith in Jesus Christ and the example he left, then you're putting your faith in God. Do not trade in the faith in Jesus Christ for the faith in man because you will be sorely disappointed time and time again. And it will make you feel stupid, and that's not fair. No. I will never be able to fully trust human beings ever again. I have PTSD. I can't. And the pe sometimes people get offended. When people have literally done you so dirty for so long, your, your, your soul is like, I guess you could say it's in self-preservation mode. I had to... By the time I knew God was the only one I could trust, my soul wouldn't even let me trust God, even when I knew I could. That shows how much it, I didn't have control over it because the trauma was that bad. I begged God to please help me trust him, see the truth untouched by man, see the truth untouched by corruption, and to see God for who he is without anyone's perception on top of it. Only God as he is abiding in my presence, being fully comfortable, being who he is as himself, untouched by any other perception but his own. And I got an answer, and it was so big. It was... Nobody's ever going to understand how scary that was. It's just not going to happen. No. God was all around me and within me. I was so terrified. I felt, so, I felt God so strong. I could feel him better than I have ever been able to see anything with my eyeballs in my entire life. I could feel him better than I've ever seen anything with my naked eyes in my whole life on this planet Earth. There was a frequency and a resonance within the power of God, and it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But it was high pitch but low pitch at the same time. Oh, it gives me cold chills. It's just... I was traumatized by the terror, but God traumatized me in a good way, and I never thought that could happen. But he took my whole life of trauma and had me experience his presence and traumatize me. But I came to the fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. If you are not terrified of the almighty, terrible power of God, then you don't know him. Yes, our God is a loving God, but he is not sissified. He does not play games and he does not no, there's a reason why it is said 
in the Psalms. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he knows his day is coming. When you know the wrath of God and you know his power, there's times where you're not even upset and trying to argue with people who don't believe. You're just terrified for them because they have no idea the terror that is burning their way so quick. And when it comes, it's going to be so unexpected. I'm willing to bet people are going to have heart attacks over and over and over because people will seek death and they won't find it. They're going to have heart attacks over and over and over and over. There's going to be people brought back from the dead just to go through judgment. Can you imagine all the people who have died and when they died, they did not have their faith in Jesus or believe in him. They will be brought back from the dead just to be brought to shame. This is scary and this is not something to be played with. Our perception will never amount to, to, to the perception of God himself. We fall short of the glory every day. We have to put that old Adam in the past and replace it with Christ. Because if you're still putting your faith in man and the example, anyone left that wasn't Jesus Christ himself, then you're letting it take you to a place that's leading you off. It's, it's getting you off task. <laughs> Women were undoubtedly treated unfairly. They still are. They still are. I'm not some psycho feminist, but I'm not scared to say the truth. I'm not. I'm not. Just like I'm not scared to tell you the media only shows you part of the story so that way they can manipulate the masses to react however they want them to and turn whoever they want to against whoever. They're not teaching the whole story in history. How can you ever know for 100% certain everything you was taught in history class was the whole story? I'll wait. It's impossible, right? Okay, so why even act like that's possible? God is the only one all the truth can be revealed through. No. No. You do not get to... No. Women and men both have the right to kindly disagree. Especially, especially if it's based on what the scripture says and that's why they're not agreeing with someone. And that's all. It's one thing if somebody's being hateful and just being a jerk and bullying and abusing someone. But if it's just someone disagreeing and you take it so far that you allow yourself to go to a place in your mind thinking this person is a threat when all they did was have a agreement to disagree. You will remain weak your whole life if you cannot handle people disagreeing with you. No one on this earth has a right to demand everyone to agree with everything they say. There's people who stick strictly to scripture, but their opinions are not something everyone fully agrees with. That is our right. That is our right to test the spirits. That is our right to lead our brothers and sisters back on the straight and narrow path. I'm sorry, but women were not put into existence simply to be a pedestal with tape over their mouth, told to be good little girls, and, and submit. Women submit to God. Men submit to God. And if you have a bunch of men submitting to women and a bunch of women submitting, submitting to men, you've already screwed up because they're both putting themselves in a position of God while at the same time denying the power of the very one true God in general and how they are not God. No, no, no. Women are not obligated to fully submit to men. Yes, she's told to submit to her husband. Okay, if the church is the bride of Christ and a woman has given her whole life to Christ and we are the bride of Christ, then would Christ not be the husband? The groom, right? We submit to Christ. If we are the bride of Christ, okay, if we are the bride of Christ, who is our husband? Men and women alike. You know this is a bigger spiritual picture, and it's not just about Jesus marrying children in all these disgusting ways. No, this is far surpassing our understanding. It is not limited to the marriages of man. No. Put all the ideals and the traditions of man out of your brain as quick as you can.
The Bible literally says not to put your faith in man. It says it clearly. Because of what account is he but a breath in his nostrils? It's in Isaiah. <laughs> Maranatha, Maranatha, I love you guys. Jesus never disrespected women or treated them condescending or treated, like the, treated them like they were less than. He was the one out of all of them who stood up and treated them with respect, fearlessly. Because he's the son of God. He knows a lot more than those disciples do. There's all kinds of stuff the disciples didn't understand. There's all kinds of stuff we don't understand. But Jesus treated women with humble kindness and love. And if you're saying that's wrong, then you're saying Christ is wrong. Tell me how it is. Christ was the only one out of him and his disciples to treat women with respect and love. In full. At all times. When he was speaking to a woman, the men were disgusted. I'm serious. You've got to see the bigger picture. Who is the son of God born through? A woman born under the law. When it comes to the full law of God, look at Psalm 119. The law of God is truth. Those who go in falsehood are not following the law of God. And Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the law. That's why he said he fulfilled the law, because he is the law. He is the law, the word of God, made flesh and full. The whole volume of the book is written about him. That's in Hebrews. <sighs> Don't you think Satan would really hate females? He was wroth against the woman and those who keep the commandments of God. Or he was wroth against the seed, the remnant of the seed of the woman. Yeah, the remnant of the seed of the woman and those who keep the commandments of God. The remnant of the seed of the woman is the bride of Christ, following the commandments of God because we follow Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, Satan comes to divide and conquer, to steal, kill, and destroy, to mimic God in every way, in a perverted, counterfeit way. Now, Jesus Christ is not limited to the ideals and perceptions of us. And if I were you, I would not trust my own perception that much. I'm not going to trust mine. You got me screwed up. You got me completely <laughs> nutball screwed up. No, I make mistakes, okay? I'm not about to risk that. This is not a game. I don't want nothing to do with my perception. I want it in the garbage, never to be seen again, and I want my perception replaced with the perception of God. So not only do I not need to worry, but I can rest assured that I'm not being led astray by others or even myself not even realizing it. And I can rest in God's presence knowing I am safe. <sighs> Aren't you sick and tired of wondering what's the truth and what is and what isn't and you know, you've got, if, <sighs> you cannot live based off the examples set by even the disciples. If it's based off anybody but Jesus Christ, you're living off the example of man. No, it, no. The disciples were not perfect. They had, a couple of them even had Satan cast out of them. One of them was Judas, who betrayed Jesus. <sighs> Granted, he felt guilty after, and he hung himself, but he betrayed Jesus. Jesus said he would only be telling those who he trusted when he was speaking to the, the disciples about something. But we all know that the wisdom of Christ is deep. We all know when it comes to the actual wording of the Bible, we know that as each translation has been written, the scribes who, are, who were translating the Bible from one language to another wrote it in how they understood what was being said rather than just writing it word for word and stop trying to perfect it as if the word of God needs to be perfected as if it's not perfect already. Do you see the problem with man? <sighs> trying to fix something that ain't broken and ended up breaking it. Well, you can't break the word of God. But you can dang sure... Break the possibility of a lot of people being able to find the truth in it. No, 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 no.
Jesus Christ is the example I follow. He treated women with respect and love. He understood that women <clears throat> and men both deserved to be loved. He's going to draw women to himself and men to himself because men and women both are in the bride or in the body of Christ <clears throat> and are part of the bride of Christ. Please. Well, I'm just, I won't say anything more on the matter, really, because it's just very obvious. And you can look at scripture and try to use it to justify your actions, but if that's not the context of what the scripture is saying, then it's a complete contradiction. Especially if it's only solely based on the example of, you know, men, not Jesus Christ himself. Yes, the whole volume of the book, the Bible, is written about Jesus. It's speaking of the typologies of prophecy, how it's been paralleling and climaxing and culminating to this moment in history. <sighs> Jesus said him and his 12 disciples were a representation of what is to come. We see the sign of the woman in heaven, clothed in the sun with a crown of 12 stars. Sounds like the bride of Christ being united with Christ. I don't have a perfect understanding of things, but God does. And Jesus, treat, he, he knew a lot better. And he was way more humble than man. And he was way more humble than the disciples. And I know that the example Jesus set versus the disciples, if I'm looking for an example to follow that I don't have to worry about imperfections in, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. How would males feel? If they were being treated the way we are. It's like the entire gender of females is being treated a certain way. Like we're all individually being blamed for something we didn't even individually do. People are not understanding the spiritual world. If you're new to it, you have to let yourself learn. Pace yourself. you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Babes in Christ are called babes in Christ for a reason. They're new to the faith. <sighs> you got to work your way up to the meat. You can't just bottle feed fresh reborn and then eat the meat and potatoes the next day. You try to get a newborn baby to eat meat and potatoes, it'll choke and die. You see what I'm saying? <sighs> Maranatha. Maranatha. Jesus is the only example I'm going to follow and trust in because he did it perfect because he is the only perfect, blameless one. And if Satan ever had a gender he wanted to alienate, it'd be females because he knew that the Son of God who would crush him would be born through a woman. What does Revelation say? The dragon was wroth with the woman. Yes, there's a deeper context in Revelations, I understand. But this is not hard to understand. <sighs> if it wasn't for men and women both, life would not be able to reproduce, which means we both play a part in this important story. And men do not get to step on women like they have all the authority over them. And I'm going to tell you why. Because men are not God. I do not worship men. I do not bow to men. I do not yield to men. I do not yield to men at all. My faith is not in men. It is in God. Not men. And a woman who doesn't bow to the authority of a man is not doing a bad thing. If you just send yourself down a rabbit hole of accusations trying to desperately justify something you know probably has a high possibility of being incorrect, you're never going to be able to finally justify it eventually. Never going to happen. So why do that to yourself? Why not just be like, eh, maybe I was wrong. Big deal, dude. 
Do you know how many times we are wrong about stuff like this? Every day. And the longer you avoid it and act like it's not there, the more heavy and embarrassing and convicting it is. The quicker you just admit it, repent of it, and give it to Jesus, and you ask him to give you the truth, untouched by man, and untouched by corruption, and only the truth from God, the God of all truth himself, then, you know what I mean? Jesus is the only example I'm going to follow. And he knew how to treat women with respect rather than treat them like slaves that were only put here to serve men. And oftentimes men quite quickly, under, uh, they very quickly forget that you men are not our God. No, you did not create us. As a matter of fact, all of you came from a womb from a female like us. So at least show some respect. Good Lord. Men have always been respected and exalted. Well, what does God say? Those who, are, who, those who are exalted will be brought low, and those who are brought low will be exalted. Look how women have been ostracized, always beaten for wanting to be baptized, treated like they're a mistake. Are you kidding me? And that's a half of the image of God that came from Adam's rib. They're brought so low. And then here comes the book of Revelation. There's a sign of a, in the heavens of a woman clothed in the sun with a crown of 12 stars with the moon beneath her feet. Did I not just say, those who are brought low will be exalted and those who are exalted will be brought low. And I'm not praising women, but I am saying there is some unfair darkness here and Satan knows it too. And he's going to try to make sure you don't understand it. If you're not willing to just say, you know what? I don't care what I think I know. I'm going to leave what I think I know in the past. And I'm going to relentlessly find this truth because I refuse to allow Satan to use me to disrespect God unknowingly. God's done nothing but love you and be there for you. The least you could do is relentlessly seek the truth and be fully willing to deny yourself and pray that God removes your perception and replaces it with the perception of the one true God. The Father, Abba Father, whose Son is Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. That's the least you could do, man. Jesus set a perfect example. Love you guys. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. If you're willing, you're willing. If you're not, you're not. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. If you seek the truth, you'll find it. If you think you've already found it, and you haven't even considered that maybe it's not because you're more concerned with your own pride in you being always right rather than the potential of you maybe making a mistake and yielding to what God may try to show you through correction. You're not seeking the truth. You're seeking to justify your own ways and your own thoughts and your own ideals. It'll never work that way. That is pride. That's the very sin that brought about the fall in the first place. In Jesus Christ. I pray that anybody who needs to see this sees it. And that Jesus Christ comes into their heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. In loving truth and kindness. Washing over them like a mighty river of living waters, that of which is free for all to drink. God is not egocentric. He does not condone one gender exalting itself above the other. The ways he taught us to treat each other, male and female, were completely respectful. Man put his own twist on it, and I'm not playing that shit. I've been betrayed and lied to by man enough to know. I'm expected to put my faith in the, in the perception of man after man has done nothing but betray me. No. Maranatha.